10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Manchester 1, United have zero. reached the promised land. How we doing, everyone? Sam here. It's Thursday, the 17th of March. Happy St. Patrick's Day to every Irish follower we've got here on United People's TV. I've got quite a lot of Irish in my heritage. In fact, every generation above me is from Northern Ireland. But that's by the by. We're here this morning to talk about Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel? Thomas. We're here to talk about Chelsea's manager, who is apparently on Manchester United's shortlist. I kind of already said my opinion on whether I think we should be going after him. But I'm going to be speaking about him in a bit more detail after the latest from The Athletic and the latest from The Telegraph on Thomas Tuchel. Because we all know that Manchester United and our search for a new manager is the absolute priority now. 17 days we've got until that game against Leicester. I don't think Sonny will be agreed before then, but this is now the work of John Murto. No game distraction, no any distraction. It's all about this new manager. So I'm going to run through all the latest on that. We're going to speak about Marcus Rashford. Uh, his tweet that he sent out last night in reaction to a video that was going viral after the Atletico game. I'll save that conversation for later. I'm going to be speaking about Paul Pogba. But it's all about the managerial search this morning. We're not just speaking about Thomas Tuchel. We're speaking about Eric Ten Hag. We're speaking about Mauricio Pochettino. You know the drill by now. Who's joining in this morning? Let's have a look down here. We've got Josh. Good morning to you. Calvin, Anthony, good morning to you. Mallory on Facebook, good morning to you. And Steve watching from Nigeria. Paula, Peter, Alex... Talkative, you're there. Take off. Fergie, you're down in the comments as well. Malps, Gary, Kyle, plenty of you. All the regulars here. Uh, we've got Adam McConnell coming straight in with a comment saying, Tuchel ain't leaving Chelsea. I'll be honest. Uh, that's an opinion I do share. Not necessarily that I don't think he will leave Chelsea. I think that part is up in the air. Uh, because of everything that's going on with Roman Abramovich, I completely understand the concept that he may leave Chelsea. And I don't think we can now uh, sort of with, with authority say he's not going to leave Chelsea. But do I want Manchester United to get involved in that sort of managerial search? Questionable. That's what we'll discuss in this video. Make sure throughout the entire video, you let me know what you think about everything we're talking about. Your opinions are important in the comments. I try to make this show, as you know by now, as interactive as possible. We've got Ian watching from Iraq. We've got Berbatov watching from Senegal. Obanda watching from Zambia. Hey, good morning to all of you. Look, it's it's going to be a good show. I hope it's going to be a good show. And it's something that I, I say quite a lot on United People's TV here. Look, we might not have football for 17 days, but in my opinion, the football is a massive distraction for Manchester United right now. These conversations that we're having now, these are the more important conversations. Talking about a manager, talking about our future, talking about our club. This is where the focus really should be. And we've got Mick watching from Dublin. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you, Mick. And happy St. Patrick's Day to every Irish fan that we've got at United People's TV. And there are quite a few of you. But let's get straight into the news and let's speak about it. I'll run through it for you. So you don't have to. Come on. Don't say I don't treat you well. Sometimes. Other times I'm in Vegas. But look, this is from Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic. And this is from this morning. Managers, transfers and contracts. What happens now for Manchester United? So it's a bit of a, a sort of um, an all-encompassing article that sort of discusses what's going on with our search for a new manager, X, Y, Z. And this is where we're going to have a conversation about Thomas Tuchel. Um, let's go down here. And let's see the bit. I've highlighted what I would consider the most important parts of the article. So again, you don't have to read the whole thing. Jeez, it's just too good. Go down here. It said the appointment of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's permanent successor will, re will, will require a manager of experience and personality goes on to explain what um Klopp had done before he went to Liverpool obviously won uh did he win the Bundesliga yeah he won two Bundesliga titles and reached the Champions League final and then we all know what Pep did before he went to City I think it's kind of a fair point and it's it's probably a reason why Thomas Tuchel out of nowhere is now um his name is being thrown up because this is, this is something I said to you in yesterday's stream. It's something that I will say in the video I'm going to do later today. Later today, I'm going to do a full story on the two short to United rumors. I'm going to take a look at when they started. I think we all know when they started. And I'm going to give my opinion really on whether there's any sort of credence to them. Uh, Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea, 2-1 winners away at Lille last night, 4-1 winners overall. 
in the Champions League round of 16. They're through to the quarterfinals again, and they're the current holders of the competition, so you cannot rule them out. There's no doubt in that Tuchel has done an excellent job since he's got to Chelsea. But there's also no doubt that he was saying there's a big lag. I don't know why there's a big lag. Uh, Sam, you're breaking up. I don't know why I'm breaking up. I'm completely and utterly plugged in, all completely fine. Uh, so I hope it, it, I hope it settles down and I hope it's, it, it fixes itself uh, because it absolutely should be. There should be no reason why this is not working properly. Uh, I absolutely... It fucks me off so much when this happens. Maybe that's why people aren't tuning in. Uh, I don't really know what to do. There is nothing I can do. I'm plugged straight into... Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so everyone say it's all good now. There's nothing more infuriating, people. I, I say to you all along, I'm plugged straight in to the uh, Ethernet. It's no Wi-Fi. Powerful internet. Nothing wrong with it. I don't know. I, I don't make the rules. I don't know why I turned Italian there, but I did. Uh, apparently it's sorted now, which is great. But thank you for letting me know in the comments. Uh, Messwin saying happy belated birthday. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much. Apparently it's doing all right now. Good. And it just, it just it infuriates me. When you put all the work in, you, get, you do all the research, you set everything up, and then just all of a sudden, the internet lets you down. That has to be one of the most annoying things in the entire world. And Matt, it definitely isn't the doorbell setting me off. <laughs> I remembered that. That was funny. But look, um, so Laurie Whitwell going on to say there that Manchester United search for a new manager. It's not confined to Poch and Ten Hag. Now, what, what's your opinion on that? In my opinion, at this point, a short list should be a short list. And a short list is a name that contains one, two, maybe three names, right? Um, not Pochettino, Ten Hag, Lopetegui, Tuchel, Luis Enrique. Hell, I've even seen Didier Deschamps' name being thrown into the hat. It's, um, that's not a short list. That, 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 that's an initial list. Right. And when it comes to the, it's the 17th of March now. Right. There are two months until the Premier League season ends. I don't want Manchester United to be getting to that game at Crystal Palace on the last day of the season without having our managerial position sorted. That's my opinion. Right. Of course, that's you can disagree with that if you want. But when it comes to Thomas Tuchel. That effectively is the earliest we could probably get him in. If, hypothetically, it was to happen. I find the whole thing a bit strange, right? Okay, I find the whole bit of thing a bit strange. Uh, but that's my opinion. What's, what are you saying down here in the comments? Let's see what you're saying. Uh, and you're saying, opinion, I think it smacks the Glazers having no clue what their plan for the future is. How can we pick a manager to get us where we want to go if we don't know where we want to go? Well, I think we all know where we want to go. And, and I think even the Glazers know where we want to go. And that's up. The, the, where we want to go is very easy. That's, that's, that's a mute conversation. Where we want to go is, well, let's win the Premier League title. Let's win the Champions League. Maybe that, uh, that goal and ambition is different if you're the Glazers. I say maybe. It probably definitely is. They only want top four. We know that. But let's go down here and let's read a bit more of this article. Now, now that my internet's working great, which is always lovely to see. And let's read this bit here. On Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel is a, is a Champions League winner, yet still on an upward trajectory. He has handled big egos and difficult circumstances at Chelsea. And it is true that Manchester United are monitoring Chelsea's situation. Although possibly complex, it would make sense for executives to go a step further and investigate whether he can be extracted from his role at Stamford Bridge. Tuchel has given indications that he will stay on under a new owner, but there is no guarantee the picture settles down and some sources believe he will be open to hearing United's pitch. Now, there's a couple of points uh, to digest there. Uh, I, I, honestly, I swear to God, I, there is nothing I can do now, ladies and gents. There's no point letting me know uh, in the comments about whether it's blurry or laggy. So don't do that in the comments because that really does distract me because then I just get annoyed. Uh, there's nothing I can do. The internet is plugged in. If it's blurry, I'm sorry it's blurry. There's nothing I can do. Uh, but... Going back to what they're saying there on, on Thomas Tuchel and everything. Yeah, he is a Champions League winner. And I personally think, of course, he would listen to Manchester United if we came with a pitch. I think that very much is a guarantee. But also down here, I would agree with this. 
Tuchel joining us, it, it, it's, it's not the fact that Tuchel joining us is unrealistic, although I suppose it's the same point. Chelsea letting Tuchel... Um, Chelsea letting Tuchel come to us is massively, completely, entirely unrealistic. And for that to happen... Let's go down here. Let's get a little picture of him up there. Lovely. Um, I personally think that... Um, sorry. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. As I said, but anybody in the comments, like, I appreciate you throwing in the comedy there. Stop mentioning the lag, please. It distracts me massively. And all I do throughout the entire stream is read your comments. So please don't do that. That's what I'm saying. Please, right? Uh, Thomas Tuchel is clearly a top-level manager. I just don't see why Chelsea would let us have enter any sort of conversation with, with, with everything that's going on at that club right now. The last thing they're going to do is reply to an email or a phone conversation if Manchester United want to come want to come uh, uh, sniffing around their manager. Okay, there's no there's no reason for Chelsea to allow that to happen. Everything that's going on at that club right now is um, they're falling apart at the seams. Their owners leaving the Chelsea era of overspending without needing a return, that's over. Whoever comes in now will not have that sort of sports washing mentality. Uh, there's a comment there. Uh, where is it? Sort of caught my eye, which is completely untrue. Uh, Tuchel is just clickbait, says Stacey. Tuchel is not clickbait, Stacey. Tuchel is on Manchester United's shortlist. I think it's taken us all a little bit by surprise. But, and I'll be honest... I don't think it will happen. That's my opinion. It doesn't mean it's clickbait to have a conversation about it because, because the conversation's right there. Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic is talking about it. James Ducker from The Telegraph is talking about it. Mike McGrath from The Telegraph is talking about it. Chris Wheeler from The Daily Mail is talking about it. It's not, um, it, it's not, a, um, it's not a clickbait. It's, it's, it's a question mark for sure. It's left a lot of us kind of scratching our heads as to where's, where's Tuchel come from? But it's, it's us sort of taking advantage of the Chelsea situation, I suppose. And on paper, I can technically understand that. If, if you're looking at Manchester United needing a personality and a winner that's going to come in and sort of take this squad and take it where we know this squad can go, then Tuchel does tick more boxes than Ten Hag does. And Tuchel does tick more boxes than Pochettino does. He's even got the Premier League experience now as well with Chelsea. But it's something that I've said all along. Tuchel is not a name that would be that would have been on Manchester United's list until Abramovich is and the sanctions against him. Right? So it's it's a reactionary move from Manchester United. And we, we keep hearing about this um this long term plan that Manchester United are doing, that this fact that Manchester United um you know thorough process to get a new manager if all of a sudden that just all gets chucked out the window because Tuchel might become available it kind of goes back to what Ant is saying there that do United really know what they're doing with this with this long-term plan I don't think so I really really don't think so let me check the microphone here yeah that's good that's there honestly ladies and gents if, if anything's lagging refresh it on your end there is nothing on my end that's wrong so if something's going wrong it's probably your end now simple as that it might not be, but there's nothing I can do about it anyway. Uh, dip, dip, dip. Let's scroll down. Let's read a little bit more on this. Um, I would probably disagree with this comment. That's caught my eye. Sanjay saying Tuchel is short term. Uh, I think Tuchel would be equally as long term as Poch or Ten Hag. You know, he spent a couple of years at PSG before he got sacked, but that's PSG. That's what happens at PSG, right? Being sacked by PSG doesn't make you a bad manager. And I think Thomas Tuchel has shown that at Chelsea. Um, I, I personally think that yeah, if, you, if you're talking about Poch or Ten Hag, I wouldn't say that Tuchel would be any short of any any more short term than either of them. That's my own personal opinion there. Uh, Anthony's saying this is just ridiculous now. It's all speculation. Anthony, this is what's been reported in the press, my friend. This is not speculation. This is us reporting on everything that is going on at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I personally would disagree with the idea that he would be short term. Uh this, this, I thought, was an interesting point. It's very, very true. You know, United have got a chance now to search for a new manager without upsetting the current manager. And that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a semi-privileged position. 
the Manchester United, we can have conversations now about who should be our next manager without being offensive to Ralph Radnick because he's there in the interim role. It's a little bit different. Manchester United can involve and should be involving Ralph Radnick in these conversations. The plan should already be there. And that's that for me is the biggest question mark that I would have. I wouldn't have any question marks about um, Thomas Tuchel's quality. I think he'd obviously be a great manager. I don't have any question marks about the, the short-termism of Thomas Tuchel. I think he would be equally as good at, in, in, in the long term as Poch or Ten Hag. There's not many boxes I wouldn't tick with Thomas Tuchel, apart from the fact that it's out of nowhere. And the only reason that we're doing it is because of what's happened with Abramovich. It's not because our long term, if, if you were to ask four months ago, who's on our shortlist? Tuchel's name was never, ever mentioned until about two weeks ago. It re And that's, that's the thing that gets me with the whole Tuchel situation. That's the thing that frustrates me about it all. Uh, from when Jamie Carragher said that Manchester United, it would be a predatory move to go after him, but I don't think that we can ignore it. I think, that, I think that's sort of reverberated into the United board. And it's now, it's muddied the waters. If we were getting any sort of uh, clarity or any or any close uh, any closer to getting towards Poch or Ten Hag, I think this has thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. And you're right there saying that Tuchel's got a very close relationship with Ralph. I don't know why you're going full caps. Maybe because you think I'm going to read it more. <laughs> but I suppose it works. Uh, it, is that a factor? Perhaps. Of course, it's 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 part of it. It's absolutely part of it. Uh, but you know. I've got no idea what United are doing with our new manager. I really, really want to say right now, the 17th of March, after us being knocked out of the Champions League, the season effectively being over, I could say with real confidence, oh yeah, I know that United are going more after Poch or more after Ten Hag. But I can't say that with any sort of confidence now. And I don't think any of you can either. I've got no idea who's going to be our manager next year, still. And I don't think Manchester United do. And that's scary. That's absolutely scary. Um, let's go down here. And, and th th this is obviously a very important situation and, and point to raise. So discussions with potential transfer signings, which are happening, cannot progress while there is uncertainty over the identity of the man in the dugout. And it's, it, it, it's the situation that United find themselves in. We know full well that we've got a ridiculously busy summer coming up. And the best thing we could do would be to agree a deal with the manager as soon as possible so that we can now start having these conversations about new signings with real confidence. You can, you can say, no, OK, we know that it's Ten Hag coming in next year. So we're, I'm going to speak about a player right now, for example. We go down here and there's a name that's mentioned straight away. Midfield is the priority position for Manchester United and Ryan Gravenberch, who performed well for, Ajax, for Ten Hag's Ajax in the Champions League last 16 defeat to Benfica, is one potential signing they have scouted. So we're talking about Gravenberch there, the 19-year-old from Ajax, a midfielder. And of course, that would suit perfectly if Eric Ten Hag was to come with him. But maybe it won't happen if Ten Hag doesn't come in. So that sort of whole conversation with Gravenberch has to be parked until we sort the managerial situation out. Absolutely. It is what it is. We've got Camilla watching from Colombia saying, fully agree. Manager is a must now. Then we can think about players. The priorities have to be right. Of course, they've got to be right, my friend. Uh, and, and I hope they do become right. But I don't know. Mick, you're saying Tuchel is a perfect fit. Calm, organised, plays exciting football. Him coming and Salah leaving will be a happy time for United. And happy St. Patrick's Day to you as well, Mick. Uh, I don't care about what goes on at Liverpool. Honestly, I swear. And I say this without any sort of bitterness. I don't care what goes on with Liverpool. And I don't care what goes on with City. They are on a different level and in a completely different stratosphere to United right now. I won't celebrate any sort of losses for one or draws for another because of it doesn't affect me and my club right now. That's how far away Manchester United are from Liverpool and City. So, I mean, one of them is going to win the league this year. Sod it. Our downfall has come with Liverpool's return. Absolutely. Ian, how are you, how are you doing down here in the comments, buddy? Let me read that out for you. The board must consider all opportunities and the decision does not need to be made immediately. I welcome Tuchel's name on the table. So I suppose that's where 
we might disagree a little bit there, Ian, because I'm not saying that the decision's got to be made immediately. Not at all. I'm not saying that this has to be a snap decision because the last thing that we need is a snap decision on, on who our next manager is. But what we do need is clarity now on who that should be. And all of a sudden, throwing Tuchel's name into the list, as I said, it muddies the water. It sort of parks the conversations that were happening around Ten Hag and Poch. And now all of a sudden, it's like, well, what about, what about Tuchel? And when it comes to Poch and Ten Hag, the process is straightforward. Ten Hag is going to leave Ajax at the end of the season. It's the, the prelude to all of that has already happened. You know, Overmars leaving, Klaus Jan Huntelaar has now been brought in as a technical director. They're making the, the steps are already being taken. And we know that Poch won't be at PSG come the end of the season. So both of those conversations are very straightforward and there's no blockers there. Before we even get a conversation with Tuchel, we've got to have a conversation with Chelsea. And there's no way that he leaves that role before the end of the season. And hell, if he gets to the Champions League final with Chelsea again, then he's going to be there to the final game of the season. And, look, and I think that's a good point from there from Jake saying, if we got Tuchel, reckon Chelsea will get Ten Hag. I absolutely would put Ten Hag as probably one of the favourites to do that. So then we'd be, we'd be missing out on him. Lou, you're saying, could this just be a ploy to just mask who United are really going for? I, I mean, it could be Lou, but it'll be a pretty crap ploy, wouldn't it? Because there's only two managers who we would be going for, and that's Pochettino and Ten Hag. And as I've just explained there, we don't need smoke and mirrors when it comes to Ten Hag or Poch. Both are available at the end of the season. There's no real negotiations that have to happen with PSG. He's going to be leaving. And I don't particularly think there'll be a huge amount of negotiations with Ajax. I don't, they, they, won't step, they won't stand in his way. But Chelsea will set up a barricade, a fortress, to protect Tuchel from United. So it just complicates, it massively complicates the issue. Would it be a case of, I think Manchester United would have to buy Tuchel's contract out. Tuchel would effectively have to betray Chelsea, who have been decent to him, I suppose. It's... It's very, very odd. And if we go over here, as I said, this is not uh, me. Ah, oh, this is now. This is now pissing me off. Why is this doing this now? I think maybe I've got to get. I've got. To go, I've got a decent laptop. Why is this doing this? It's giving me debt. Honestly, technology people, it's brilliant when it works. When it doesn't work, it is the most frustrating thing in the world. Absolutely frustrating. Although it's back now, no reason it was doing that at all. But it is what it is. Um, what you're saying down here, Nidov, you're saying what is needed is clarity and direction. Tuchel is an opportunity, but not all opportunities are meant to be taken. A very profound, a very profound super chat there. Uh, but look, if maybe this was three, four months ago and the sanctions happened on Abramovich, then I think Tuchel's name in that list would make absolute sense. But just for us to do it now, when it felt like we were getting towards somewhere with um, Poch or Ten Hag, it's strange. As I said, this isn't just me doing some clickbait. This is me reporting this in the news to you. This is from the Telegraph as well. United are also keeping watch of Thomas Tuchel's situation at Chelsea. Let me get rid of that orange so you can see that. But there is not much expectation at this stage that he will leave Stamford Bridge. And they even throw in Lopetegui as the name as well. It was understood that staff are struggling to press ahead with summer transfer plans and concerned about the impact of such delays with so many key decisions on hold. That's it. That's exactly the, the, cru the crux of it all. Everything at Manchester United is on hold. There's a bottleneck at Manchester United now for our plans next season. And that bottleneck is our new manager. That's why there's a priority on getting this decision done and done ASAP. And if we go over to see what the Daily Mail is saying, that from Chris Wheeler, he's saying Thomas Tuchel, again, is on Manchester United's list of candidates. He mentions Lopetegui and Enrique. The Enrique one is even more strange, in my opinion, even more strange than the Tuchel one. Enrique's Spain manager. He's got the World Cup in December. He's not going to be leaving Spain. Why, we even have, why is he even on that list? That makes even less sense. Uh, Matt O'Neill, what are you saying here? Say, don't you think Tuchel has proved himself more so than Poch? Absolutely, Matt. If, if you were to compare the CVs of Tuchel and Poch, Poch's pales in comparison. Absolutely pales in comparison. He's got two French League titles. He's got the Champions League. He's got a French Cup as well, I think, something like that. 
He's managed in Dort with Dortmund. He's managed with PSG. He's managed at Chelsea. He's a manager who's still on the way up, for sure. It doesn't it, it doesn't compare particularly, but it doesn't mean that we're going to be any closer to getting to sure. It's like yeah, I, okay, I could throw Klopp's name into that hat and say, look, compare Klopp's and Poch's uh, CV, and obviously they don't pale. They, he pales in comparison to that as well. But we're not going to get Klopp, are we? And you're saying, Sam, if I'm honest. I'm not even sure this, if this manager is going to be the one either. It wouldn't surprise me if we are right back here in two, three times looking for the next Messiah. Hey, look, this is Manchester United, man, and you can't rule that out. Uh, our club has taught us to be, to be massively pessimistic. The natural position of any Manchester United fan now is caution and pessimism, whereas previously it was all about confidence and arrogance in your own, you know, arrogant in your own self-ability. That's not the case anymore. We're all naturally pessimistic as fans. And the reality is, is, as long as we've got the Glazers in charge, then we're probably going to continue going in these cycles, aren't we? Uh, Chris, nice to see you down there, buddy. As always, appreciate the super chats. Appreciate the support that you all give me because maybe I can buy a computer that works properly and some internet that works properly. Maybe I need some new internet. I'll look into that. I don't know whether that's going to solve it or not. Uh, Chris, you're saying, hoping that talk of Tuchel and Poch is a diversion to allow United to scale up talks with Ten Hag without a lot of, uh, without a little without alerting other clubs to make a move now. Let me know in the comments, say eh? This will be an interesting one. I'll... If Ten Hag doesn't come to Manchester United and he does leave Ajax at the end of this season, what club do you think he will go to? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll read a few of them out. I choose the Super Chat fire in here from King Eric. Thank you very much, King. You're saying, really want us to play dominating football. Enough with the counter-attacks. We need someone who can train us in the ball possession and squeeze the life out of all of our opponents. I would say probably out of the three managers, I would say Poch is probably the most likely to be considered a counter-attacking manager, but they've all got possession-based foundations inside their coaching philosophies for sure. Um, of course, Ten Hag been brought up in the Ajax way. Poch has shown that previously. I mean, he's, he's, he's been PSG manager. All they do is dominate the ball. Not they dominated greatly. And Tuchel, of course, if you've ever watched Chelsea, they're great at setting up on the counter-attack. I think Tuchel against uh, City and uh, watching him against City and Liverpool, that Chelsea do play ball. They're all decent enough in that sense. Let me go down here and see what you think about this. Uh, Paul, you think he'll go PSG. Uh, Matt, you think he'll go PSG. Somia, I probably agree with you there. I think that Ten Hag won't be going PSG. I think it'll probably be Zidane, if anybody. Uh, but lots of you saying uh, PSG. Um, I personally don't think it'll be PSG and I don't think Xavi's going to be kicked out of Barca. If you watch what Xavi's been doing at Barca, he's been doing very well in terms of when he came in to where he is now. I'm not saying he's, he's resolved their situations. Peter, you're saying Real Madrid. Now, that is that is a possibility. I would say that's definite possibility, more so than uh, PSG. I personally don't think Ten Hag would go anywhere near PSG. I don't think he would consider that the right next step in his career whoever goes into PSG, the only reason you're going PSG is to win the Champions League. It's not something that Ten Hag has experience in. Um, they've tried everything under the sun to get... Honestly, I find it hilarious, genuinely hilarious how PSG have still failed to win the Champions League. And it goes to show you that money isn't everything in football because they have given... They have thrown everything. They have thrown everything at that. Uh, that's a bit of a curveball there from Sumya uh, saying uh, Ten Hag to Newcastle will be a possibility. He was being linked up. Uh, he was being linked with that Newcastle job before and he turned it down in the same way that he was linked with the Spurs job. Maybe it'll be a little bit different if um, they could, They do manage to avoid relegation this year under Eddie Howe, which it looks like they're going to. I mean, at the same time as Newcastle on their, what is it, eight, nine game unbeaten run now. You see what's happening with Watford, what's happening with Norwich and even Leeds, although Leeds did win. I don't think that Newcastle will be going down this year. But no, I, I personally agree with lots of the comments here. Jonathan as well. I think it's far more likely that Zidane goes to PSG than Ten Hag. But I think the Real Madrid name being thrown out, I think that's a good shout. Ten Hag going to Dortmund, says Denny. That could be another good shout as well. I just don't think it'll be PSG. But look, as I said, we're looking at all the reports this morning from Chris Wheeler there uh, from the Daily Mail. We go back over here. And we look at what The Athletic have been saying. And we scroll up here. This is not clickbait from me on United People's TV. I don't really do clickbait. It's not really my style. I bring in the news as it happens. And we can see The Athletic, The Telegraph and The Daily Mail all saying 
that Thomas Tuchel is on Manchester United's shortlist to become our new manager. So what I'm going to do later on today is I'm going to do a full story on the Tuchel rumours. I'm going to take a look at when they started, see if there's any credence to them, and just go in a little bit more depth. And I'm also going to do a separate opinion video on, on Tuchel probably at the weekend. Because as I said, we've got 17 days now to talk about our club and the planning, the managerial situation, everything behind the scenes. All right. That's personally what I think is the most important thing for United this season. So the football was almost a bit of a distraction. But now we've got 17 days. We can just talk about nothing but that. And I think that's probably a good thing. And I hope United are doing the same behind the scenes. Lou, what are you saying? Saying with Tuchel's name now in the mix, who would be your ideal manager for United? I personally would, st I still stand by Ten Hag. I still stand by Ten Hag. Um, I just, I can, I can see the fit. I can understand the concept that maybe he doesn't have the personality for it by comparison of Poch or the p comparison or, or of um, Tuchel. But I wouldn't use that as a reason to block his move to United in any way, shape, or form in it. I mean, it's not as if he hasn't got a personality as well, but Ten Hag for me, part of it is a gut instinct, right? Part of it is. And that's why I understand. Part of it is just opinion-based. Part of it is just me looking at Ten Hag and what he's done at Ajax. And it's, I think one big thing with Ten Hag that I really do admire is his rebuild that he did. Because because to, you can any, any manager can get any team... Uh, firing for a season and that yet that year 2018-19 when he got to the Champions League semi-final he kind of arguably had a bit of a golden generation there at Ajax didn't he he had um had De Ligt had Frank de Jong had Van der Beek uh it just worked that season it worked for him but then that season De Ligt left de Jong left and then Van der Beek joined United poor poor lad but for him to have gone from that situation to the situation he's in now this season where they've Obviously, got knocked out in the round of 16 in the Champions League. They're top of uh, Eredivisie. They've had an impressive season. And he's rebuilt that. And he's done it twice. And that, for me, is one of the best things you can ask for in a manager. It's one of the hardest things for a manager to do. To have, you could, to have Football works in cycles. We all know football works in cycles. But to do it twice, for me, that is a good thing. I'm going to go down here and read a few more of your comments. Jonathan, you're saying nothing will be clear regarding Tuchel until we know who Chelsea will be sold to and what will happen to them. Cannot see him leaving and joining us before the end of the season in any scenario. I absolutely agree with all of that, Jonathan. And it's probably, for me, the reason why I would want United to just step away from Tuchel. It's, I understand the logic on paper. Of course you understand the logic on paper. Hell, Chelsea are the current Champions League holders. He's done a fantastic job since coming in from PSG. But we would have to wait until the end of the season. We would have to wait a full two months before we could announce that deal. And I just don't think United can afford to do that with what we've got to do this summer. And you're saying Tuchel is a quicker fix to maximise what we already have. Ten Hag is a long-term rebuild guy who can build the foundations for future success. What, what do you think we need more in the comments then, ladies and gents? I'll, I'll, I'll leave that. That's a good question from Ant. Or it's a good point from Ant. So I'll let, I'll let you... Answer me in the comments. Do Manchester United need more of a quick fix? A quick fix is a bit unfair. As I said, Tuchel is not like a Mourinho or a Conte. Someone who comes in with the intention of only winning that season and then just tearing it up and leaving you with this puddle of shit behind. I don't think Tuchel is that sort of manager. But I do think he would. It will be a quicker route to success with Tuchel. But would it be, would it be more sustainable with Ten Hag. And of course, I hope that Ralph is involved massively in both of these situations. I absolutely think he needs to be. Because if he's not, I think Ant was right in what he said earlier, two, three years' time, we're going to be coming back here and having this same conversation, aren't we? Because it will happen unless the manager is supported properly. Um, Klein, you're saying long-term? Absolutely. I. My instinct is to agree with that. My, my natural instinct is to always think long-term at Manchester United. Um, why would Tuchel downgrade from Chelsea? Nah, come on now, mate. Let's, not, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Chelsea, I love... I, I remember I used to have loads of... Uh, ironically, a couple of best mates of mine are Newcastle fans. They're like, Sam, I can't wait until Fergie isn't manager of your football club 
and you understand what it's like to be a proper football fan. And, you know, eight years after, I'd be like, okay, I know what you're talking about now. I cannot wait until Chelsea don't have this sports washing bankroller of an owner who does not care about profit because money is irrelevant to him. He simply used Chelsea as a protective tool and that's it. And now they're going to have owners in who care about the profit and loss, who care about the investment and care about the return. It's going to be a massive reality check for Chelsea fans and I can't wait for that to happen. Um, Paul is right here, over 600 watching, but less than 150 likes. Come on, people. That's 450 of you sitting there and not liking. People seem to be stingy on the likes on United People's TV. I don't know why. Even if you have, even if I've got a video that does really, really well, people don't seem to like it. Maybe I'm just not that much of a likable guy, but some people can't disagree with what I'm saying. I don't know. Uh, could we get 10? We absolutely could. We can definitely get 10 Hag early and we can definitely get Poch early. There's no way if we got Tuchel that it'll be before the end of the season. Let's go down here. Megaloman saying there's no quick fix for this club. Fans need to realise that. And make sure you're saying United hasn't been a long term since 2013. And Vitterbird, nice to see you this morning. You're saying, do you think Wan de Sar would stop his Ajax current contract to come to United with Ten Hag? I know in December it was a no, but he is showing unhappiness. Now, Van de Sar has always, not always said, but he did say in an interview that he will, he, at some point, he will come to Manchester United. I don't personally think that'll be at the same time as Ten Hag. I think with the transition that will happen at Ajax post Ten Hag, Van der Sar will feel a, a moral responsibility to make sure that he steers that. And there's no way, in my opinion, that Overmars, Ten Hag and Van der Sar all leave Ajax in the space of 12 months. That will be just like crushing their structure. I think Van der Sar will probably stay there for a year or two more and then move on and hopefully move on to Manchester United. Uh, imagine Ten Hag and Fletcher next to him up. Fletcher's a bit odd. Uh, I think I think even Ralph Rannick has come out and said, I genuinely have no idea what Darren Fletcher's job is. I don't even think Darren Fletcher knows what his job is. I think he's down as a technical director, but he's been like a technical director, a first team coach, an academy coach, uh, a set, and every sort of coach. And then he's an assistant manager sometimes in games and gets booked somehow by the referee against Atletico Madrid, even though he decided that he, he, he forgot what the yellow card was every single time Atletico went in for a tackle. But there you go. That's a different conversation. But look, with Thomas Tuchel, like final final point on him, nobody can argue with his CV. If you're looking at Tuchel, Ten Hag and Poch and you're comparing their CVs, there's only one winner and that is Thomas Tuchel. Absolutely. Champions League winner. And that says it all. Champions League winner up against a man who lost in a final and a man who lost in a semi-final to that man who lost in a final. But I personally think it would be I think it would be foolish of Manchester United to park all of our plans and hope that Chelsea would let Tuchel come to us because they could block it. Absolutely could block it. I think so anyway. Uh, and Jonathan here with a lovely comment saying, Ten Hag, get him to bring Anthony, get Hannibal, Amadik, Balgana, Garnacho, Mengi, Mengi? Uh, and Fernandez into the squad. United have got, uh, a, uh, we've got a wealth, a wealth of talent in our academy sides now. Our under-19s uh, are into the... Under-18s, sorry. Is it under-18s? Under, I think it's under-19s. Are into the FA Youth Cup final for the first time since 2011. Over a decade since we've been in that competition. We've got players like Hannibal Medjbri, who is on the verge of the first team already. Zidane Iqbal, who's already made his uh, debut for Iraq in the same way that Hannibal's made his debut for Tunisia. You've got uh, Fernandez, who I believe is a left-back in that uh, FA Youth there is really a fantastic set of young players. So whoever comes through, and I, I would probably say it's the same of Tuchel, that's the same of um, Ten Hag and the same of Poch. I would expect all of them to use them. But <sighs> I don't know who it's going to be. I wish that, I, I personally wish this Tuchel situation didn't even arise. I wish that this name wasn't in the mix. I wish that we haven't just had a conversation about him this morning because it's just confused it all. And the last thing Manchester United need is more confusion. Um, Garner saying, why are you not talking about the players instead of the manager? Because right now, we have no manager for next season. So it doesn't matter who's playing for us. We haven't got a manager. That is the most important thing that we need to sort. 
absolutely need to sort. Uh, I'll read, go down and read a few more of your comments out here. But then we need to move on and we need to talk about this Rashford situation, which emerged yesterday. I really want to hear your opinion on it. And Matrix, I completely agree with you here. The Tuchel situation for me is an unnecessary distraction for Manchester United. It's something that we've got to talk about, right? Because he's on the shortlist now. So it would be wrong of me now at this point to ignore the Tuchel situation and just to pretend it didn't happen. That's called burying your head in the sand. That's pointless. But I just do think it's an unnecessary distraction. Uh, Edwin, you're saying hiring Tuchel will be a mistake. We should make impulsive decisions. Like we should, Well, I would completely disagree with that. The last thing we need to do is make impulsive decisions. Impulsive decisions have got Manchester United spending over $1.4 billion and spending it wrongly. Um, I know I hate, I, Sam, I hate to say it, I have to admire how Liverpool hand in the Salah contract situation. They're looking three, four years down the line and not making rash decisions. I mean, well, it depends if uh, Salah leaves. Uh, well, then it might not be that situation. But Manchester United have got so much wrong over the last five years or so from contracts to player signings to managerial situations. There's not much we've got right. And that's why no one really has got true belief that we'll get this appointment right. And I understand that. As I said, Manchester United fans, we now come from a natural position of pessimism. We expect our club to get it wrong. And if we get it wrong, if we don't get it wrong, we get it right which my opinion we did with Ralph Radnick, it takes us all by surprise. That's why I was so happy because if we go, if we, re if we reverse that situation with uh, Ralph Radnick, who else would we link with? We were linked with the, um, the, with the former Leon manager. Was it Rudy Garcia? Gee, I'm trying to remember what the shortlist was. Brendan Rodgers was a name that was thrown in at that point in time. Zinedine Zidane was thrown around, but they weren't particularly likely to come at that point in the season. I remember us getting it and I was like, wow, United have surprised me in a, po in a positive way. Um, let's go down here. Uh, and Jonathan, not, big comment from you there. I keep reading your comments out, apparently. Yesterday, criticized goals for saying he can never understand why they hired Ralph, but we are really hardly any further forward with knowing who our manager is, it seems. Chaos rules at United. No top players are signing until they know who we'll manage. I think Romano tweeted this last part yesterday. I think Manchester United got it right, in my opinion, signing Ralph Radnick. Manchester United have got to listen, listen to Ralph. That's the whole idea of the consultancy role. There's no point in being a consultant if you're going to be ignored. It's like going to your doctor and your doctor telling you you're ill and you're like, eh, I'll take my chances. The doctor's just told you you're ill. You should probably take his antibiotics. Nah, that's right. I'll take my chances. I've got a good feeling about this one. Manchester United need to take Ralph Randnick's advice on who that next manager should be and why it should be him. Because I guarantee he can tell you. And I don't particularly think he's going to be... Um, he won't be drawn to either of them. And, uh, you know, there won't be any emotion, emotional attachment to Poch or Ten Hag. If Ralph Randick chooses one, he'll choose it for the reasons for the, of the football club. And the football club only. Not because his daughter's married to Pochettino or he formerly played for PSG or anything like that. It will be a, a sort of an impartial, emotionless decision. And that's what we need. It's exactly what we need at Manchester United. We need those sorts of decision makers making the decisions at Manchester United. George, you're saying it's a no-brainer. This board only want Poch as a yes man to the Glazers. Well, Poch has got experience of working in tough environments. He's just come from one of the toughest in PSG. Well, he's still there right now. And obviously he did that at Spurs with Levy too. And Ten Hag. And well, we, we did this previously, didn't we? We did like a pros and cons of Poch versus... Um, Ten Hag you know what I mean and we looked at everything and that was one of the biggest uh, question marks that we all had about Ten Hag is the fact that he's he's worked in a comfortable environment his whole career uh, at uh, Ajax with a board that works with him rather than against him and I know that um, Asan you're saying join Lake from work you know Tuchel's more knee jerk yeah Tuchel's very knee jerk it absolutely is uh, and Ter Terry Tips hello Terry how you doing down there my friend on a phone jack is finest. PSG, a tough environment. I mean, I don't know why you're putting a question mark at the end of that. PSG is a horrendously tough environment. The, the, the expectation there is ridiculous. And you can clearly see it by PSG's players bottling it every single time they get to the quarterfinals in the Champions League. Well, well, not all the time in the quarterfinals. Because, you know, they got to the final, but they lost that too. Every time they can bottle it, they do bottle it. Let me go down here and see what else you're saying. Look. Let's scroll on here and let's talk about something else that happened yesterday, which I think is an important thing for us to talk about. 
And that's this situation with Marcus Rashford. Now, you won't be able to hear this video because oh, I can't. I need to somehow figure out how to get my audio through here. But this is this is Rashford yesterday, not yesterday, the day before, after the Atletico game, and fans shouting over to him. So like after that, basically he's heckling his performance. Now Rashford here, if you look here, he throws up his index finger, and this guy here calls him absolute fucking bell end. His his words, not mine. Now that caused quite a lot of stir, understandably, on social media when this video came out at 4 p.m. yesterday. So much so to the point that Marcus Rashford yesterday sent this message out. This is from Rashford's over there, from Rashford's official account. It said there are two sides to every story. This is what he said. So the video can paint a thousand words. In this case, led to inaccurate info being shared on social media. For weeks, I've been heckled, threatened, questioned, and last night my emotion got the better of me. I'm a human being. Reading and hearing that stuff about yourself every day, it wears you down. No one is more critical of my performance than me, but what you see in this video lacks context. I've been heckled from the first minute I stood, I stepped foot outside the ground. Abuse not just aimed at my football. People were looking for a reaction from me. Phones at the ready. Of course, I should have ignored it and walked straight past, but that's what we're supposed to do, right? I want to clarify two things. The first being what I actually said to the man throwing abuse at me, which come over here and say it to my face, a fact security can back up, blah, 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 blah. What do you think about this situation, right? Because I can't exactly say here on United People's TV that I'm a saint for that situation. I did a video yesterday saying it is the end of Harry Maguire as captain of Manchester United. What I didn't do was abuse him personally. I massively questioned him professionally and from a professional aspect of captain as captain of Manchester United um, I don't think he should be there anymore and I suppose that's a subtle difference between commenting on someone's job and what they're doing right and wrong in terms of a professional aspect and actually just going after them right and going after them personally and abusing them and heckling them let me know what you think about that right in the comments uh Gary is saying criticism and heckling are part and parcel of being a footballer. Abuse is not and should never be tolerated. That's exactly where I stand on that, Gary. Every every footballer, because you're a foot a footballer is a job in the spotlight. It's why they get paid so much, and it's why public criticism is allowed. Because you know, I bought I I, I paid for a season ticket. Why why would I not be allowed to criticize you if I don't think you're doing your job properly? Going after someone personally, going after their family, that's different. That's very, very different. Um, and you're saying, as I said in the WhatsApp group, once he walks out the door, he's a human being and not a footballer. He deserves common decency and respect. But it's, um, it's, it's exactly that. It, when it comes to after that Atletico and Jame, uh, game, United fans were extremely emotional. But it doesn't condone that. Personal abuse outside of the, not outside of the football pitch physically, but everybody is well within their rights as a football fan to criticise Marcus Rashford for his performances. I think that's fair. That's completely fair. You're talking specifically about the job that he is doing or the job that he is not doing on the pitch. That's normal. Anything further than that isn't right and shouldn't be tolerated. Jonathan, you're saying here, you, you were at the game. And unfortunately, there's so many idiots hurting abuse at our own players. United fans are well known for standing by managers and players when they put on that red shirt. And it's something I'm, this is something I actually touched on, Jonathan, when I was uh, speaking about Maguire getting jeered when he went off. I said, that's, that's not really, that's not typical United. I, I'll, I don't know why it always stands out with me, but I always will remember when Falcao played his last game at Old Trafford. And I think he came off the bench. I think he did, or he came, or, or, or he played, and, and then he and then he came off. I remember him getting a, like a proper like round of applause. Old Trafford singing his name, and Falco had a terrible season. Not through the lack of trying, just had a terrible season. But United fans could have been angry about that. But I remember, I, I remember the support that he was given. But I suppose a lot's changed since then, eh? And. There, there's a separate video I could show you of Harry Maguire properly getting abused when he's going out, getting booed, getting criticised, but. 
I don't know. It's 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 the way things are going at the moment. It's the way things have gone with the culture of, of football, I suppose. Abuse is so much easier to do. You can say what you want online and then nine times out of ten, you're not really going to get anything coming back. Uh, Vita Bird, you're saying, seeing the United fans, fans throwing things at Diego Simeone, I was shocked. Shocked? I wasn't shocked. I, wasn't, I was shocked. Yeah, I was shocked. I wasn't surprised because the frustration boiled over. And when you're, when you're Simeone and you play that, that the, I'm sure you've seen that stat. 30 minutes, the ball was in. So for the last 30 minutes against Atletico, the ball was in play for like 11 minutes and nine seconds. They are the kings of shithousery. The anger and frustration was riled up by Atletico's style of play. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not saying that's a justification. I'm saying that's an explanation why emotions would have been even higher after the game than if we had just played a game against a team going toe to toe and just lost. Um, Ian Grant still going on about this. Boring now. Well, well, I'm not sure, mate. This happened quite literally quite last night. So um, let's go down here. And he's saying you have to remember the demographic has changed. Many of the fans in Old Trafford now have never been through the hard times and built that grit and loyalty to the club. I'll be honest, I hadn't built that grit and loyalty to the club. I was born in 89. I've missed all that. Um, it is what it is. I, I think I've already spoken to you about um, about the, the the expectancy of immediacy. That's what that's what a lot of football fans want now. They they want it right. They ever, it's like loads, loads of little mini Mourinho's as football fans. They want Champions League and Premier League right now and if we're not doing it right now there has to be someone else brought in right now to win it right now players gone bring someone in right now that's winning right now and uh, that's kind of the whole idea of football cycles and which is is what happens in football football works in cycles but everybody wants it now and immediate is what it is hey look so that was an um an interesting stream today I would say uh, I apologize about the technical 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 problems at the start there's no reason for them to be there it's all completely fine now i haven't i haven't changed anything it's just that the internet decides to have hiccups when it decides to have hiccups and there's nothing i can do about that but look uh right well fair play to you ray you, you survived the run at consider well look at that but look i'll wrap it up for today i'm gonna do a video later today on the tushal situation it's not clickbait people for some reason his name is on United's shortlist. So I'm going to speak about it in a video because I can't ignore the elephant in the room. Uh, I've got lots of videos planned over the next week or so all about our managerial search. I'm going to do one of my proper in-depth coaching philosophy videos on Eric Ten Hag. I'm going to do one on Mauricio Pochettino. And hell, maybe I'll do one on, on Thomas Tuchel now. We'll see. But thank you very much for everybody for joining in. Thank you very much for your comments. As I said one more time, I'll apologize for the technical issues. There's nothing I could do about that. But make sure you join in tomorrow. It's the Friday stream. Oh, baby. Make sure you join in tomorrow. Make sure you check out the Tuchel video. If you haven't already, check out the video I did on Maguire yesterday because plenty of you already have. Take it easy, everyone, though.